comes to mind when you see this picture? Do you also think this was shot in Punjab or Haryana in the month of October? Actually, it wasn't. This, in fact, is a picture of wheat straw being burned in a small village, Pandhana, in Madhya Pradesh during the month of April. I came across this during my fellowship and learned that crop residue is burnt at various times of the year in multiple regions across the country, making it a major source of air pollution across states. Around Delhi, one of the cities most affected by the practice, stubble burning contributes between 15 to 40 percent of the air pollution. We are all privy to the harmful haze that takes over the city during winters. So how much straw or crop residue are we talking about here? Let me give you a hint. India produces more than 130 million metric ton of straw every year. That's enough straw to cover the famed Lord's Cricket Stadium 70,000 times over. Now imagine 35,000 of those stadium arenas blazing and making the air unfit for breathing. And it's not just us. Farmers, being in such close proximity, bear the worst brunt of the poor air quality. Why then do they still keep burning straw year after year? Because for farmers, this residue hinders their next crop cycle. They also have to spend money to dispose it and it has no value. This problem intrigued me. Could we repurpose this waste and in the bargain also tackle perhaps the major concern of the day, climate change? Turns out, yes. We can add value to this stubble and reduce the carbon emission caused by burning. What's more, our research shows that this can also decarbonize another sector. I'm talking about an industry which is responsible for more than a third of the global greenhouse gas emission. Construction. Digging up the earth to furnish brick is causing an irreversible topsoil degradation, which directly endangers food production in the long run. As countries are urbanizing globally, the projection is that we will be building the equivalent of a new New York City each month for the next 40 years. This increased housing also entails rising demand for furnishings. The demand for wood-based panel has gone up by eight times just in the last three decades. To meet that demand, we have been converting vast stretches of natural forest to fast wood forest and disturbing the global ecological balance. This demand simply cannot be met by natural forests. It's unsustainable. But amidst all of this, there is good news. We have an alternative to both these building blocks. The humble straw. The idea of a house made by straw is likely to remind you of a structure somewhat like this, easily blown away into the wind with a loud puff from the wolf. But the truth is, we've been using straw in construction for more than 400 years. The same straw can be further engineered into sturdy, robust and aesthetically pleasing building material. Here is a house we built in Germany using compressed straw panels, the success of which led to the start of Structure Eco, a company where we take homegrown straw and turn it into a durable product called agri-bio panels. We've been replacing mainstream construction material using these agri-bio panels to build schools, hospitals and homes. Now you might have a few concerns. For example, are these buildings fireproof? Yes. Turns out, during the manufacturing process, the same flammable straw under high pressure, releases silica and builds a coating on the top of the surface, the starving off fire. And that's not the only upside. Straw is also a natural insulator that can be further engineered to be moisture and termite resistant. 
unlike brick or wood, straw comes at no environmental cost because you don't really make straw. It's a byproduct of grain production. So as long as we need bread, we will have straw. What's more, it's affordable, stores carbon, and now with structures innovation can also add to a farmer's income. India, being the second largest producer of agri-residue globally, is uniquely positioned to reap the benefits of this sustainable material at scale like none other. We can either continue to build the way we have and harm nature or choose a sustainable material to build our homes. I leave the choice to you.